72 hours, goddamn, I'm feeling late Damn, I'm in the face, my mind is living on cloud nine And this night is never on vacation Sound of that mind's a rally Yo, what is up going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you what I've been running on the PTS as well as what I've been running in Cyrodiil as of late. Uh, with these AoE tests, the extension thereof, it's very difficult to run a Mag DK. Uh, other classes are harder such as you know the Magplar, but Mag DK is incredibly difficult just because most of our skills by nature are AoE, but I think I've come up with a build that uh, damn near beats my Tempest build, um, especially with the new buff to one of the sets we're running coming in on the PTS, which is going to be absolutely fucking broken. I really hope they keep it the way it is. The only set I would, well, the only class I would expect you to run this on is a DK, so uh, we'll get into that uh, right now, actually. So here's the character sheet. Very similar to uh, our previous build. I have a little bit more max mag, a little bit less stamina, but uh, we'll go over the stat sheets. Mag recovery, don't worry about that. Stamina recovery, don't worry about that. We're running heavy armor with all reduction jewelry, so we don't have to worry about the recovery at, at all. We are abusing the uh, burning pass of the combustion pass that the DK has. Uh, spell damage, don't worry about that. Most of our damage is coming from just our innate ability to sustain in the fights. Critical resistance pretty high. Uh, buffed. We'll kind of check everything out here. So here's kind of everything buffed. You got 2300 spell damage instead of the uh, low ass 1900 that you saw. Physical resistance, spell resistance on the back bar is as follows. It's pretty beefy. Uh, this is a double Destro running a Destro staff and an ice staff. Running the Mage Mundus. Bewitch Sugar Skulls just because it gives you the health recovery and this shit is super cheap. And I accidentally somehow touch that thing but anyway so sets wise the first set we're running surprise surprise I can see it in your eyes it's me it's me it's Ernest T it's Elfbane uh, this is just a really good set guys uh, especially with the new mythic item coming out the uh, pale horseman this build is subject to change contingent upon what that ring actually does, whether they nerf it or buff it or whatever. I will be coming out with a separate build for that, but as of right now, this is what I'm running until the update 28 or whatever the hell it is drops, and it's not going to change. I have everything min-max as possible that you can have on this build. Granted, I am not max CP. That really doesn't make a difference. So, Front bar, charge, disease enchantment. The reason you do this is because the disease with charge pretty much procs Befal, which is a healing debuff every time it procs, literally every time it procs. So if you're trying to burst down those Templars, those Roly Poly Stand Blades, or trying to Vigor Rally Heal, uh, this really helps deal with those guys. Pretty much any class, really. Here's the set bonuses. If you are unfamiliar, we are pairing Elfbane with a very, very well known set. Yes, it is Elfbane. Or excuse me, the Grothgar. So we'll go over that right now. So here's Grothgar. If you guys are unfamiliar, uh, they did change the set to where it is not. It does not scale off direct damage. It now scales off your dot damage, which is very good for DK anyway, because probably 90% of your abilities are dots. Eh, probably about 80%. So Thaumaturge becomes really uh, beneficial in this patch. So that's two sets back bar running da 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 ice staff of Daedric Trickery well Daedric Trickery in general so running a weapon damage enchantment on that with the defending defending and sharpen got a little bit of a buff now if you're unfamiliar with Daedric Trickery does this does change on the PTS currently it's still got the same uh, two three and four stat pieces but for the five piece it got a huge buff. Now, when you deal damage, it still does the same thing. You get one of these five random buffs. And pay attention, you get one of these five random buffs for 21 seconds. And you can get a new buff every nine seconds. Meaning, you can have major protection on top of vitality. Or major protection and major mending. Or you know whatever combination of the two. 
Expedition, this set gives you everything the DK needs. Literally everything the DK needs. You need more healing, heroism. I cannot think of a better class to have major heroism on. You get more old bag, which equals sustain, which equals damage, which equals tankiness. If you're running leap, which we are, which is a big ass shield, it just does everything. The only thing that th this class lacks is a lack of snare removal, which I've taken care of, and also mobility, which you have a 2 out of 5 probability that you're going to get major expedition. So, it's just great, guys. I cannot think of a better set. You don't have to push your spell damage super high to get big healing because odds are you're either going to have major protection, mending, or vitality up at any given time, increasing your healing and damage reduction by about 30% respectively. So this is just a phenomenal set. And not only that, guys, you can put this on your back bar. It doesn't have to be on both bars. You just have to deal damage. That's it. And I'm actually using add-ons to keep track of what buffs are on my dude so I don't have to look at my bar and debuff bar so pay attention kind of right here around my character so i have five slots kind of like a star i have a one two three four and then a five slot and that helps me keep track of i don't have to look at the picture see i can tell the top one there this is major protection so the way i have it is i have major protection i got my two healings vitality and mending here and then the two uh, other kind of I won't say lesser ones, but I have uh, Expedition and then Heroism down here. It's just so I can keep track of what's going on and whether I can be more aggressive. For example, if I get that major protection, I know I can just go in on people. Right. So it's very important to keep track of what buffs are active. And you will have a couple, almost three active at any given time so when this comes in Update 28. A phenomenal set. I cannot think of anything better on DK. Uh, we are running two other sets. I'll go over the traits. Running max match, running one tri stat, running sturdy on the shoulders, M pin, M pin. Now I'm running well fitted. The reason I'm running well fitted is because we don't have snare removal. Now you could run wings that gives you the snare removal, or you can run the Sigic Order skill line. Uh, I forget what it's called offhand, but uh, race against time. Yeah, that's it. It reduces snare removal, but, you know, like I said, it takes up a slot on your bar, and you don't really benefit from the crit that provides you since we are running Malakanth. Now, that is subject to change, depending on whether I choose to run the Pale Horse Ring, which I probably will over Malakanth Ring, uh, but I'll let you guys know and update you uh, going forward on that. So, I'm running three well-fitted pieces, because we have enough block. We're running an Ice Staff. The reason I'm running an Ice Staff, by the way, is just so I can keep the weapon damage proc um, up more consistently. Now you can run sword and board, that's fine, or run poisons, whatever, but uh, I much prefer having the uh, extra spell damage proc on my back bar more consistently than having a little bit extra block mitigation on my back bar, to be honest, since I do roll dodge quite a bit. And then, there's set running is trainee. Uh, this is impen as well. We're using this just for the health bonuses. Uh, I think this build has around 30k in serial. Um, 31.5 or 32 with the Emperor buff, so you're pretty fucking beefy. Now, when it comes to jewelry, uh, running all cost reduction, and then of course, Malachite's Banner Brutality. If you don't know what this set does, well, you're obviously a new player. And anyway, it's broken as shit. Go get it. And the reason running cost reduction is because of the combustion passive. When you apply burning, you get magic back. There's no internal cooldown on this. And even though they did nerf Grothgar, uh, Grothgar, as of late, I do not think it can proc burning. If it is, it's a very, 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 very fucking low chance to proc it. Of course, that's okay. We have two abilities on our front bar that do it. Burning Embers applies it 100% of the time. And then your big ass AoE CC we have here applies it to pretty much everyone it's a great now we'll go over the skills i think that does it for the sets i cannot express enough how overpowered daedric trickery is and will be in the upcoming patch so if you do not have it go get it craft it get it while it's cheap i think it's an overland set maybe it's crafted i actually don't know but go get you a set made ask the crafter so we got ellie drain 
The reason we have this is for extra sustain in the longer fights, like a 1v2 or a 3 scenario. It's free to cast, softens them up, gives you magic back. This is equivalent to 600 magic recovery. The only thing you have to do is apply this to one person, apply any dot, and it keeps it up on them pretty much indefinitely during the fight. Fossilize, basically you see in the game. It's hard not to run this. Burning Talons. Now, Burning Talons, I don't really like this skill unless you're running Elfbane. Elfbane makes this go from a 4 second dot to a 9 second dot. It's everyone a huge, huge ass AoE. Roots them, which can proc your Power Lash. So you don't have to fossilize and then power lash. The roots itself can proc your power lash for extra healing. Uh, this is a great uh, stamina drain econ ability, essentially. If you're 1vxing, like your job is just to wear them out of stats before you do, right? And this ability does that and then some. It's a hefty ass hitting dot. CC applies burning to everyone. Roots, it, it's great. Flame lash. Or Power Lash, uh, this is just for the extra healing so when we go in on people, uh, we don't have to swap to our back bar to get our heals off and then go back in. That's just really annoying, so I run Power Lash just so you can keep up the sustain pressure. You can try running Molten Whip, but with the AoE test, it's really hard to get Molten Whip to prop. Typically, you would use Flames of Oblivion, spam it two or three times to get Molten Whip to its max stacks of Seething Fury, but... Flames of Oblivion unfortunately counts as an AoE, so there's no more doing that and getting the 15, 20k crit Molten Whips, which are really nice, they're really fun to use. But uh, yeah, Power Lash is just much more consistent. Next, running Burning Embers over Engulfing Flames, just because Engulfing Flames is the AoE and we just do not have the ability to run two AoEs on the front bar. I'm actually stretching it, having three AoEs on both bars, but the reason I'm able to get away with that is because Volatile Armor and Cauterize are longer buffs. I don't have to apply them readily. I can just let them sit and whatever. So the only AoE I have to worry about spamming is Burning Talons. But yeah, Burning Embers instantly applies a Burning Sass effect. So this is a super cheap ass spell, so it costs 1800 effectively because as soon as you apply Burning, you get 500 magic back. Uh, it heals you when the effect ends. If it gets purged or whatever, it heals you if the target dies. It heals you if you recast this. It heals you. It's really good for keeping up the sustain pressure, and it's also a decent dot. Next is Ferocious Leap. If you're 1vxing, I don't see what else you can run. You can run uh, just for shits and giggles Magma Shell if you want to go in and tick and zerg. It's pretty fucking funny to watch, not going to lie. Uh, but it's kind of hard to burst people on a zerg down running Magma. It's damage really isn't there sometimes so you can either run magma or you could run uh, ferocious leap if you're solo which i am probably 99 percent of the time it's really good for catching people off guard it's a gap closer cc does huge damage gives you a shield um primarily use this for the night blades and sword streak in a way uh, because this class does lack a little bit of mobility, especially if you don't get the major expedition proc from your Didric Trick reset. So that's why this is here, just to make up for the weaknesses. Back bar. Running Cauterize because this is a long heal over time. Yeah, it doesn't heal for much, but with AoE testing going on, this is the best you're going to get. I tried running Rapid Regen, but you just have to use it too often. So it's if you're running solo rapid region just kind of screws you over because you can't cast your burning talons when you need it or to re uh, reapply your buffs because when your buffs fall off on DK you're just toast we got coagulate pretty decent heal on the back nothing buffed up it's still 9k this is our oh shit button I wouldn't spam this this build does have a lot of sustain a lot a lot a lot of over sustaining um, some people I don't know how they do it they just run this but uh, I don't think that's a good approach at all. I think you need some sort of uh, healing over time as well. But that's just me. Uh, Coagulate's not too bad. Gives you major fortitude, increasing your health recovery. We do have a decent amount of health recovery on this build. So, uh, Dragon Fire Scale. I love this ability. It reduces all projectile damage by 50%, and it retaliates with the Flames of Oblivion proc essentially every half second. So we'll just 
round that up to every one second this does about 12k damage this is completely unbuffed by the way to anyone attacking you per second that's pretty dope a lot of people sleep on this ability or they don't have it on the bar or they're running the other wings that remove snares guys I don't know what the fuck you all are doing like, stop sleeping on this ability it's not cheese okay it's just not DKs are so hard to use in open world so you need any little advantage that you can possibly get and dragon fire skill gives you that now volatile armor this is just your major buff it does damage as well over time so typically I don't want to preemptively apply this I want to jump into a group and then apply it now degeneration is our a major sorcery source and also does a decent dot over time now if you wanted to run the serial pots which give you major sorcery you could free up a slot here but I like running uh, major hero or minor heroism pots and I'll explain that here in just a moment but yeah, this is kind of a flex spot depending on what potions you are currently running. Last but not least, Temporal Guard. This just gives you minor protection on your back bar. And if you have the Sigic Order skill line, it actually gives you a little mini shield when you block. Which is uh, very helpful. It does add up, add up over time. Now, that about does it for the skills. Potions. Uh, that I'm currently running. If I can find them here. So... Uh, the first one is the uh, Minor Heroism Pots. This gives you a uh, major interrupt, increasing your recovery, which really doesn't matter too much. Restore stamina, which is very important. And then it also gives you a Minor Heroism, which increases your ult generation. Now, on DK, you guys know what that means. More ult equals more damage, equals more sustain, equals more tankiness. So, it's just a recipe for success, in my opinion. If you're getting heavily fucking pressured, you can run Essence of Lingering Health. When you're against Night Blades, or no, you're going to go against Night Blades, have some Essences of Detection. It gives you major sorcery. Yeah, you can just craft cheap ones if you want to. These are the, the higher end ones, but just any Essence of Detection with uh, a Stamina proc or something like that will uh, do the job just fine. And like I said, if you want to run the Alliance Spell Drought Pots, you can also do that, which frees up a slot on your back bar to run whatever you damn well please. It's your build. Make it yours and do your thing. Don't really need the Tri Potions. You can have them. They're always good to have. And that's pretty much it, fellas. We'll go over the champion points real quick. Now, you guys will have more than me. Uh, if you're max CP, you'll have uh, 36 more points than me, to be exact. Now, if you are a max CP, it's very important to have the exploiter passive. So, you'll take points out of Elfbane, completely ignore Elfborn, excuse me. Completely ignore it. Put all your points in Thaumaturist, you get to 75 points, which you should have just enough to get your exploiter passive. And then the rest of the points, uh, I put into Master at Arms, Spell Erosion, since we're in heavy armor, Spell Erosion is never a bad thing, LA Expert, and also Blessed your healing done. The the blue tree is the important one. The rest of them is kind of whatever. But make sure you have the Explorer passive with Thaumaturus. 56 Ironclad. We got 37 into Resistant. 37 Hardy. 27 Elliot Defender. 26 Thick Skin. Like I said, you will have more points than me to play around with. Recovery. Heavy Arm Focus. I would put your remaining points into here. Or, if you really wanted to, you could put more points in here just so you can get this reinforced passive. It's entirely up to you guys. I mean, one into Siphoner just for a debuff that needs to be cleansed. Doesn't really do anything, just applies a debuff that uh, can take the place of actually a purge or whatever. It could remove a negative effect. They could remove this useless debuff rather than one of your dots, which is pretty beneficial for one point. We do run a lot. Sprinter, Warlord, Tenacity, every now and then I'll have you attack. Not often though. Rest of the points into Befoul, Tumbling Shadow Ward. You'll have more points than me, so I would probably put them into Befoul and Tenacity. And that pretty much does it for the build, guys. I want to thank you guys for tuning into the channel. Best of luck during the Witches Festival. I hope you guys get the Apex mounts, the really cool ones. I know I'm not even going to try because the odds are. 
I have terrible RNG in this game, so good luck to you fellas if you do that. Happy Halloween. Have a good fall. Go out to some slaughterhouses or some scare fest. Get out of the house a little bit. The weather's wonderful. It's nice sweater weather. Again, this has been Horcrux. This is my Markar slash AoE serial test build. If you guys liked the video, please like it. About 88%, 86% of you guys are not currently subscribed. Please, please, please subscribe. It will greatly help out the channel. It will motivate me to do more videos as this. Gameplay with this build will come. You guys know how it is. I'll probably be streaming with it. Feel free to drop by, ask questions, comments, criticize, laugh at me when I fuck up. And the way you guys need to know to be around for that is hit the bell. You can hit the dislike button. I don't care. But hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Alright guys. Happy Halloween. And deuces.